Okay, so I'm Kevin. Um, my background's primarily in mobile gaming. So I, was, uh, I ran the user acquisition function and retention and product marketing at a mobile game company up until the company got acquired in June of 2019. And then from there, I started, uh, founded this company, Headlight, where I'm a currently a vice president. And we do, you know, kind of full stack growth marketing from everything from BI work to, you know, managed media to creative production for kind of a, a, a broad bucket of clients, both web and mobile. Um, and, and some of that, of course, is running TikTok ads. And and uh, for me, let's see, for, for Netflix over the quarantine, we really liked this show, Marcella, which I hadn't heard of before. It's a British show. Uh, yeah, it's a crime kind of mystery type show. Okay, that's a new one. I've not, not heard of that one. I have to check yep. that out. Everyone in the uh, comments, if you'd also like to share your go-to uh, Netflix stroke, uh, you know, HBO Max or whatever binge watching uh, series, let us know. And over to Natalie. Hi, I'm Natalie Rosenblatt. I'm a senior performance marketing consultant at Feature. Uh, we're a mobile growth consultancy. I've been working with apps for a little over three years and uh, primarily specialize in new user acquisition for paid social channels, including TikTok. Um, thanks for having me here today. I'm super excited to be part of this uh, panel and talk all things TikTok with you guys. Um, my Netflix binge show, for some reason, the first thing that comes to mind is Emily in Paris. That's probably one of the ones I binge. Um, kind of cheesy, but it, uh, it was a good show. <laughs> Great. We're seeing much more diversity now. Initially, we were doing this, and people were always naming the same thing. Ozark was a common one, but uh, <laughs> I guess people have cut a branch out. This has gone on so long now. Good. Well, welcome. And uh, oh, great. We've got Bradley just in time. So uh, hi, welcome, Bradley. And, hey, how uh, are you doing? Great. Well, we will. We're in perfect time to introduce you next. In, in the meantime, uh, Justin, uh, maybe you can let us know a bit about yourself. Yeah. Hey, guys. It's a pleasure to be here um, calling you guys from Amsterdam. So it's a bit late in the day. So I hope you don't mind, but I'm uh, enjoying a beer. Yeah, I run um, two agencies uh, here. Uh, one of them is a, a digital design and production agency. And then recently we launched uh, Zensa, um, actually just before the lockdown, and we are a social media campaign agency. We sort of jumped on TikTok um, as soon as we saw it exploding and, and people were dancing in the back gardens doing some routines. Um, I've got to be honest, I don't watch Netflix. Um, I've been binging on reading books during the lockdown, so that's my admission. So I can't say anything. The last, the last Netflix series I watched was Stranger Things series one, so that says something about me. That's definitely well. You've been very disciplined to avoid watching any television during the uh, last twelve months. That's for sure. Uh, well, welcome and uh, Bradley. Great, great. You could join us just in time. And uh, yeah, if you just uh, maybe introduce yourself and uh, we're also sharing uh, our um, go to uh, Netflix uh, binge lockdown uh, series. Oh, yeah. Well, I've been watching Bosch on uh, Amazon Prime. It's kind of like a detective show, um, kind of gritty, kind of nice, interesting. But my name is Bradley Kincaid and I'm the creative director at Opera Event. Uh, we specialize in putting influencers and actors into creatives for brands and mobile games. Uh, we have worked a lot with TikTok, Facebook, uh, Instagram, and Snapchat. Uh, we're partnered with Facebook and TikTok as creative partners. And uh, we work with the, several different companies to help them kind of create a voice on each platform. Great. Okay. So I just got a follow up question uh, for each of you. I think we're all set now. I'm going to close down this uh, slide there. And let's just close that there. Great. So, well, let's kick off. So, uh, uh, let's start with Kevin. So, Kevin, you working at Headlight, you've got some great clients, people like Disney. You've worked across a whole load of different uh, paid platforms. And uh, yeah, how has TikTok sort of found its way into your sort of channel mix? Yeah, I'd say kind of one of two ways. You know, either it's a top of funnel sort of brand awareness type play, 
or it's increasingly becoming, you know, viable as a as an actual ROI positive performance channel. And I think that you know clients at scale can expect anywhere from five to fifteen percent of of spend to go th to there in, in comparison with something like Facebook. Um, so we've been seeing that you know improve over the past uh, year or so. So it's been exciting to see TikTok sort of grow as a performance channel. But you know we do consider it to be a bit of you know marginal scale. I'd say. Right. So this is a kind of. Uh you know, uh, you've got your kind of Facebook, Google, and this is a kind of uh, alternative uh, right now. Right. Right. And uh, Bradley, is that sort of your experience the same? This is, you've got kind of, this is a, you know, how big a, a deal is this for, for your creative platform? So TikTok is a very big deal. It's a, it's a new platform that is blowing up out of control. Uh, a lot of brands have found the value a lot sooner than others. Um, but we have started to find that more of our clients are more interested in, you know, discovering what that looks like. There was a lot of confusion in the beginning of, you know, well, it's only for younger people. It's not really for, for our brand, but TikTok has aged up a lot. So our, our company has really helped brands to kind of like explore that platform more. Got it. And uh, Natalie, you are one of the pioneers of, of TikTok ads, I would say. You've written probably some of the most uh, comprehensive uh, blog posts on the topic and uh, clearly been in it from uh, from the start. So, uh, yeah, what's, what's your perspective on this? Why did you suddenly take an interest in TikTok ads? Yeah, so uh, we had a client that was initially interested um, in getting in early stages and they were a game. So the target market just seemed perfect um, and, or for advertising and TikTok. And so we set up, we got in, we set up a test um, and we just really took advantage of that honeymoon phase, like that first month of promising um, and revolved around um zeroing in on that creative strategy to drive uh scale and success so um yeah it was just really from after the first couple of weeks a really promising channel that ended up becoming one of um the top performing channels in line with like uh facebook snap uh google and um all those other and app ad network channels as well Great. And uh, Justin, uh, you sort of old school um, app stroke mobile uh, marketer. And uh, I think you were doing kind of different, interesting kind of creative stuff for a while uh, on digital ads. Yeah. How, and now you're sort of fully into uh, TikTok, kind of specializing in the, the platform. Uh, you know, what sort of brought you to this this point? Yeah, I do feel like a, an old school kind of guy. I mean, I started working in mobile advertising when MSM Messenger was big. I mean, I'm nearly 40 now, so I feel like a bit of a dinosaur in, in the room. James will know exactly what I'm talking about. But, um, well, I felt um, like when Facebook really took off, I thought that their advertising platform was a bit of a joke when they were trying to run um, Facebook ads and look where we are now. I mean, it's it's been absolutely phenomenal. Phenomenal about how, how much people use Facebook advertising. The reason I wanted to... Okay, I think we've lost Justin. Uh, okay, well, maybe he'll come back. Well, let's let's carry on. I think we, we got the gist of that. So TikTok ads, a couple of people have touched on it. So, I mean, why bother? We've got, you know, we've got some really mature ad platforms like Facebook or, or Google or even Snap's been working on its own uh, ad platform for a couple of years now, building new features, you know, make it more sophisticated. Why bother, uh, why bother with, with this new TikTok ad platform? Anyone want to kick off? Um, I mean, I would, I would just say that the reason why it's most, you know, beneficial to, you know, get involved with TikTok with all these other platforms out there is because TikTok is a place where uh, the viewers absorb the content in a completely different way. And they like to support other creators. And a lot of the brands that have been successful on TikTok are those that start to think like creators and less like advertisers. Um, and 
you know, that the engagement level is just different on TikTok than it is on Facebook. Got it. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that. And the, the way that like even the user behavior is on TikTok is so different than any other channel. Um, the way that like the content is consumed and like the virality effect of how quickly something goes viral, but then how quickly it dies out is so different. But um, ultimately, I think that there's just a really big market out there in TikTok that you won't know until you test and um, see if it's a profitable channel for you. Got it. So I guess this sort of brings us to where you were when you, you got cut off, Justin. You know, why bother with TikTok as a platform? We've already got, you know, some great ad platforms out there, whether that's Facebook or Google or even even Snap. Why bother with TikTok ads? I think, like, to, to be honest with you, TikTok's a holy grail of creativity because we've seen so much before, like everyone focusing on data and trying to find every single piece of information about the audience and and try and overly target on data. And you've, we've seen with studies and reports that if you focus too much on data, you don't necessarily get better results. Whereas TikTok focuses on engagement, creativity, and let's be honest, fun. So for me, I mean, I really love to dive into creative and making engaging content. And I think that we're now at a stage where people realize it's not really about how much you can target down on someone. It's about how you can engage them and, and buy into a product. And I think that TikTok does that really, really well. Got it. And uh, Kevin, you've, you've already mentioned, uh, yeah, this is a, a small part yeah. of your, your mix, but I guess, uh, you know, you, you're still covering it. Why? Right. So, I mean, the first point definitely is that you can acquire users profitably on TikTok. You know, that's always our, our first and foremost, you know, reason to expand to something like TikTok. I think increasingly it's been playing a role as a vector for creative production, especially on platforms like Facebook. So, you know, what's working on TikTok is increasingly becoming palatable for Facebook users. And I really think like the whole pivot from high production value to user generated content is really driven by TikTok as, as like a product becoming popular. So we employ it like that in, in that sense as well. Um, sort of a leading indicator for what creative to produce and how to, how to uh, produce it for Facebook and other channels. Got it. And uh, looking at TikTok as a as a TikTok ads manager or as a as a platform, you know how good or, or bad is it when you compare to probably at the the most sophisticated end, uh, Facebook or you know maybe you know uh, you know where where is it in terms of maturity? Well, maybe Natalie would if she's early on in the game, she might want to make a few yeah. positive and negative sure. comments. How much stuff did you see that was still in Chinese? Oh no, it was actually all in English. Yeah, it was all it was all good. It was definitely oh I guess there was some some uh yeah non English like errors that we got like pilot policy violations here and there. But um overall I think it pretty straightforward. It's like the the structure and everything reminds me of like a Facebook snap mix. Um, it's a little finicky sometimes, but overall, like the capabilities and the targeting, um, I think it's pretty sophisticated in terms of like how you can set up auto creative optimization or like get down into granular targeting and custom audiences and all that. Um, yeah, I don't think it's my, from our perspective, like when we first kind of started testing, it was, it was pretty easy to use. Yeah, one thing I found um, is that if you start messing around with campaigns too much and you change creative out and you don't let it run and you change budgeting, is that the systems really don't like that. Um, they'd much rather you, you place in the creative for maybe four or five different ads and, and let those run um, and let the algorithm do its work. Um, we did get a lot of rejections at the start, I have to be honest, um, running campaigns where they're saying there's too much skin in the content and all kinds of weird rejections. I don't know about the rest of the guys and that, but yeah. that's coming, that's less and less now. Right. So I feel as though with the operations moved over to maybe the States is that ha happens less and less, but we got some really strange uh, re rejections at the start, but overall, yeah, pretty easy uh, platform to use. Kevin, do you like working with it? Your, yeah. Your, I your, 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 your uh, team like working with it? Indeed, it's, it, I very much uh, agree with Natalie. It's like mechanically, it, it resembles a lot of Facebook um, in like 2016, 2017, when they first 
rolling out the uh, you know app event optimization products and eventually value optimization. And that's really where I've seen the product uh, evolve for the better the past year or so is that, you know, you can't just do things like bid on installs, you can bid on trials, you can bid on, you know, complete registration and, and ultimately purchase, I believe now, although that might, yeah. I'm not sure if that's available to like across the board, but you're really starting to see like the outcomes change with the optimization event choice, which is something that, you know, Facebook has been great at. So I really think they're just following Facebook's playbook here. And it's, uh, it's, it's comforting, um, as an advertiser, I think, because like a lot of those features are intuitive if you've spent a lot of time on Facebook. Got it. And Bradley, you're integrating with this, at, I guess, an API level. Um, you know, how, how are you finding the, the platform technically and, uh, you know, in, in business sense? So for us on the integration end, we just make it to where the clients can use our uh, in-home made dashboard uh, to be able to collect their creatives and directly upload them into the TikTok library without having to download them. Um, and, and that's as far as our integration goes, as far as our platform. Um, our platform does a number of different things for the client in order to uh, manage large large orders and large campaigns uh, scheduled out through quarters. So it, it helps to be able to have that integration so they can just come in, click a button, send it over to TikTok library, and then go start their campaign. Got it. And uh, Isha has a question. By the way, if anyone else has questions, please uh, leave them in the chat or the, the question box and we'll try and deal with them. We've got four uh, TikTok ads uh, experts here, so good chance to, to answer any. Isha's asking, um, you know, based on on what we've already been been discussing, is is TikTok, uh, you know, compared to platforms like Insta or Facebook, is this better for bigger brands or smaller brands? You know, who, who's TikTok for ads for? Is it you know, as Kevin said, it's an add on maybe for your Disney's of the world who have the budget to try and scale up, or is it something where yeah, smaller client can uh, maybe try and innovate and get some share of voice? So. I have seen both, uh, you know, large companies like American Eagle, Dunkin' Donuts, uh, they perform, you know, a number of different, very innovative campaigns on TikTok and were very successful. And then I've seen small average everyday uh, consumers create businesses from TikTok. So I would say it's absolutely a viable uh, platform for small businesses to thrive on because one of the things is a callback to what I said earlier, where the, the user engagement there is so different and they're so supportive. And when someone is like, you know, out there trying to do their thing and they do something creatively and they engage people in the right way, they will get an enormous amount of support back from the community. Whether you're a large brand or a small brand, it's all about how you engage. Yeah, I'll, sec I'll second on that. I think you made a brilliant point there, Bradley. I think um, it, it's open to absolutely everyone, just the way, the same way that Snap and Instagram and Facebook campaigns are open to everyone. Um, it's just execution is key. Um, we work with two clients. One had an amazing organic profile on TikTok. They put in loads of content and they had loads of videos and then they ran paid campaigns and, and their performance was way better. We had another client who just kind of had three videos on their organic profile and they didn't really pick up on on anything um, really conclusive in their campaign. So I think as long as the execution is really good and there's consistency, it makes a, a big difference. I think Daisy are, are asked also a really interesting question just there in the chat about ROI on a web-based campaign. I mean, there's it, it's still brilliant for big brands and, and small brands to do campaigns on TikTok, but there are some there are some improvements needed because you can't track um, conversions, post-click conversions, for example, on TikTok. I think there are some holes there. So maybe some people are holding back because there are still some improvements uh, needed on the platform. Any other comments on who, who the TikTok ads platform is for? What type of clients or brands? So pretty pretty much everyone should uh, give it a go i guess all right good so um well based on that that comment from daisy what about yeah tracking and analytics what's the best way to you know measure success of uh, the campaign on on tiktok what sort of metrics are you tracking um you know you know and how robust is this this tracking 
Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's really a core limitation. I think of the platform now is that, you know, whatever, whatever optimization event you want to send back to TikTok, that has to occur in the session because it's all cookie based or it's session based. Um, so, you know, we work with clients in a variety of ways to sort of get around that. One of which, for example, is to, you know, direct to something that's really simple to fill out like an email capture form. And then you hit them on a webcam or an e email campaign, um, that is specific to people who, you know, email you captured through that and then, you know, create customer profiles and measure ROI that way. But, you know, it's not as plug and play as Facebook is in general. And, and you know, you, sometimes you gotta be creative as to how to track that. Yeah, we were using um, an MMP uh, and basically after optimizing on CPI using the UI and then uh, just basically yeah, using MMP, but we would use, like the vanity metrics, <clears throat> like click-through rates, conversion rates. Um, but we would mainly look at like, if something is scaling, we consider that successful. And then is it hitting the KPI, whether it's CPI, ROI, or um, some CPA, then that would sort of be our North Star on whether we decide to continue to let it to spend or not. Yeah, I, I I agree with. I just basically did the same thing as Natalie just said. We were um, focusing on add to cart. We had a lot of retail clients, a lot of e-commerce clients, and just focusing on add to cart because the conversion wasn't happening while they were always in session. We had to say, yeah, maybe they're coming back again later on, and uh, and that kind of thing. But I think the email catch is a good idea. So you can click through to a landing page, and people punch in their email address, and then. That sounds like a good a good workaround, but there's definitely a long way to go uh, in terms of conversion tracking. Got it. So quite simple metrics, just trying to get some scale, really. Uh, Natty suggesting, and then see if you can back it out to some sort of uh, action at the end is the way to go, and not necessarily as sophisticated as, as some of the platforms. Great. I would uh, I would just like to follow that with one last statement to say, don't allow that to discourage you. In order to adventure onto TikTok, you have to be willing to take a few risks and be willing to, you know, try something new. It's all about, you know, stepping outside of your your traditional advertising box and, and trying to, you know, understand that you have access to not one, but multiple demographics in one place that you can engage with all at once. And uh and I just know that like everything that we all just said there, it can be, you know, it sounds very discouraging in terms of, you know, tracking ROI and we all have a boss that we have to answer to. But at the end of the day, even your boss should understand that when you're, you know, uh, traversing new territory, you have to take risks. Got it. And uh, yeah, question from Nick, kind of on this, while we're on the subject of uh, comparisons, uh, you know, do you find your clients spending more of their budget on TikTok or or Snapchat? Uh, yeah, TikTok versus Snapchat. I guess Snapchat's uh, yeah more mature, not as much hype as the moment, or it seems to be uh, having a renaissance. But yeah, how do you sort of compare TikTok versus the the more established alternative? I think it's I think it's hard to compare. It's like case by case. I don't know if there would be like a generalization that we would come uh, have like a consensus among the group here. But like for yeah, it was just really dependent on like the the app. Um, generally, like for the game that um, I was working with, we would see better performance in TikTok. But um, I mean, that was just like we we actually had struggled for a while to find a new creative one in Snap. So we were able to get it in TikTok and then we were just kind of capitalizing on it. And it was interesting because our assumption it was that what works in TikTok would work in Snap and vice versa, but um, that wasn't actually always the case. And the creative for um, the most part did actually differ between TikTok and Snap with what picked up. Got it. And uh, Kevin is, is, uh, is, is is snap similar to TikTok on in in terms of your view or much the same experience as as you natalie on that like it really depends client to client and and <laughs> the the creative that you would think is repurposable it really is not um in the same in the right ways so 
you know, I have clients where Snap really doesn't work at all. And TikTok is, you know, six figures or higher a month. Um, and it's just like kind of depends. I also think that it, if you get that TikTok or that that ad on TikTok that just hits in the right way and like gets that sort of, you know, magic to it on the TikTok platform and it's just resonating with how the users are, are interacting with content, like that can be a huge driver in TikTok that I really haven't seen as much in Snap. Um, Got it. Well, hopefully that's answered your question, Nick. So let's turn to targeting. Uh, you know, you're throwing money down this channel. Uh, how are you making sure that you hit your audience and you don't just burn through a load of cash and you've uh, completely wasted the money by, uh, you know, showing it to people who have absolutely no use whatsoever? Don't want to kick off. So in terms of targeting, whenever we're working with our clients, you know, we understanding their their target demographic, uh, who their their average user is, understanding if they're wanting to, you know, serve the underserved. Uh, all of this is very relevant all the way down from the concepting stage. And, you know, I'm a firm believer that, you know, there is a tremendous value uh, in 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 any project on any platform. I have had some clients in the past where you know they have had zero success on snapchat because of its youthful uh vibrancy and we were able to uh help them create a voice on snapchat even for their you know specific type of app and you know for TikTok and facebook and all these different platforms a lot of clients are starting to learn that you know it's not one one shoe to fit all feet it's going to have to be different and you're going to have to optimize platform to platform. Um, you know, it can be costly. It's a gamble. Whenever you start making big changes, it means big risks. But those could be potential big gains. And if you work with the right company that has the right plan, uh, you're able to uh, hopefully come out on top at the end. Got it. Um, OK, any more comments on that? Yeah, I, I guess, you know, just at a high level, kind of the, the macro strategy, at least on our end, has been to, to focus on like big variables that we can slice by that we can be sure of. Like there's much less of a hyper targeted uh, infrastructure to to how we approach TikTok in terms of like performance campaigns, I guess, if that helps. Um, so keeping keeping it pretty broad, but like also slicing on variables that matter. Yeah, we, we also found most of us actually with broad audiences and then um, TikTok released like this new like behavior or like organic behavior target um, based off of like if you uh, comment like um, I don't know what view uh, certain videos on or certain category within certain categories on uh, like in the last seven days or 14 days we actually found a lot of success with that too but um, we mainly the like main lever that we would pull was on creative it didn't really seem to matter. Like as long as we had a good, strong creative, it seemed like you could push it in any audience and it would, you would see strong performance. Got it. And Justin, any comments on targeting? Yeah, sorry, I dropped out there totally. Um, I, I mean, I'm, I, maybe I've been around in the game a little bit too long. I think there is a heavy influence by the ad, um, ad ops team there at, at TikTok. And um, if they see something going really well, if there's an ad creative that's got a load of content, a lot of uh, comments, and the creative is really engaging, I do believe that there is some manipulation there going on. They'll push something they think is really good and it's, it's doing well. Um, and at the end of the day, you can reach a really wide audience. So I don't think targeting is super popular. It's somehow nice, though, to think that if you target on an interest level and an age group, that um, you can do some basic targeting. But again, it really comes down to creativity and, um, and engagement. I should, I should, one more thing I wanted to add on that. Like, we haven't really seen the market verify that prices are different between two audiences. So like taking a very specific audience that should be high value people, like we don't see the CPMs be dramatically different from a broad audience. So like that leads me to believe that they're either priced improperly or inefficiently, or there isn't that much of a difference. Well, you mean where the, the little arrow points out if you're going for a broad audience or a narrow audience, is that what you mean in terms of price difference? No, I mean the, the cost for impressions. 
yeah, I don't see any difference at all. No, not much. No, not no, much. Yeah, not much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, one thing I can say for sure is that, um, I mean, one when we, we when we run a campaign and then we've played around with the targeting after it's gone live, we've noticed that the performance has gone down. So we really learned our lesson. We put in our our ad, ad sets. We let it run for a while and then let the algorithms do their work. To be honest. Got it. So we've talked a bit about uh, why you use uh, TikTok ads. We've talked a bit about the uh, targeting, a bit about tracking. So what about creatives? Um, this is the absolute engine by the sounds of it of a successful TikTok ad campaign. You know, what, what are your tips for this? Um, we've had a few just now talking about e-commerce from Savannah, but yeah, how, how should people be approaching creatives on TikTok? Is it something you can do in house? Do you have to actually use influencers because it's got to be so raw, or you've got to find someone to front your brand? You know, how, how do you deal with with creators on on for TikTok ads? So, as far as creators, I apologize. You go ahead. No, go go for it. As far as creators go, uh, we have found that using large creators, uh, while you are working with them you're you're paying for their influence not so much their creative abilities or anything like that and we have actually found that by using smaller creators uh we're able to uh work with a broader group of influencers as well as uh tap into a much deeper creative pool um there has been a tremendous success for our clients with using smaller influencers on campaigns uh more essentially as actors versus using them for their influence and uh it's more about creating an organic experience that the viewers can absorb and feel like they can engage back with yeah i'm, I'm gonna 100 percent agree with bradley on that one i think you hit the nail on the head we we did a campaign for vita coco we reached out to some influencers some people that had a big audience and they were well known they were difficult to get hold of. Um, it was a little bit outside of the budget for the client. So we went back to them and said, hey, why don't we work with some some um, influencers in the, in the creator platform? And then, yeah, the, the budgets were good for what they were what they were able to do. Uh, we worked with three creators. They produced three um, TikToks each. And, and it was just phenomenal. I mean, it was amazing engagement. And I think Bradley's absolutely right. Just don't think about the the audience that they have, but about how they can be creative and, and do some really cool stuff that fits in with TikTok. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I think that you guys hit the nail on the head um, there. I think like also TikTok, the actual app, it makes it easy to find. Uh, we, we would call them native content creators. Like they're not these huge influencers that are making like millions of dollars and are posting, um, you know, on their Instagrams and all that. but um they're creating content and it's working and it's like TikTok makes it easy where you can search certain keywords or brand names or whatever it is and you can find like there's a chance that your brand somebody's already made a TikTok just about you and the brand and we just started reaching out to people um that way that were their content went viral or it had like you know a certain number of, of thousands of or tens of thousands of views mm -hmm. And um, we just started, they either have their contact information on their TikTok profile or they usually link their Instagram. And then from their Instagram, you can get their email or just DM them. Um, but yeah, we started doing that and we saw, a lot, that's how we found a lot of uh, content creators. And we just basically whatever, you know, come up with like a small budget for, I don't know, one minute, two minute, three minute video. We would give them um, kind of like a loose script. We would not give them word for word because it just doesn't sound natural that way but like here are the points we want you to hit like do what do what you can um and then the other thing is like if it doesn't work right away um there's some inflection point of how many times you're going to try versus when you're going to give up but um you know give it like a, a fair chance a, a couple different um styles and a couple different like themes and design styles and they can even edit them edit it themselves you can launch it through their like TikTok video creation uh, video that they save. You just have to, uh, you, you can't relaunch a video where, when it has a TikTok logo that kind of dances around the corner. So we would just have like our designers put a gray bar in the top and bottom. 
um, to, to avoid that. But that was like an easy way we, we got through creative and it was like done partially in a house where we would find, uh, we would search for the creators, but they would make the videos themselves. Yeah, we're, we're finding people very much the same way, mostly natively through the TikTok app. And like, there seems to be a magical like follower count, like 50 to 150,000 where this person has like charisma and, and good like appeal with what, you know, the, the TikTok audience, I guess. Um, but also, you know, isn't gonna be outrageously expensive, um, which I don't think is like necessarily a great call to bet a bunch of money on, you know, one single influencer that might not have the resonance with the product that you desire as a marketer. Um, and I think the the key, at least for us on, on TikTok, is really just high high velocity creative testing uh, iteration and deployment. Um, and you know, TikTok benefits I think that structure because the algorithm is so literal with with, with your inputted CPA. Like, hey, I want to get installs for this amount of money, and if it's not hitting that, like, it doesn't really go over that. So we don't see it as much of a cost to test a bunch of creative since like it ends up just getting not getting a lot of spend. But as Natalie pointed out, it does sometimes take multiple tries. So Kevin, how many how many creators are you going to put live in a campaign just out of interest? So we we like to map everything one to one, actually. So well, it, sorry, ad set to uh, add one to one. Um, yeah. In a campaign, we have uh, you know potentially hundreds of ad sets. Um, yeah. Yeah. Depending. Okay. Yeah. I mean, like well, we so always we... have a one to one, and the reason the reason I I think is that we've just found unequal, like the first 1,000 to 1,500 impressions are exploratory. And the algorithm is like, this is the best creative. And then the rest of the creatives don't get spent. That's kind of so, been our yeah. experience. So if you had like, um, let's say you're working with three um, creators and they produced nine videos. So like they all did, all did three each. Mm -hmm. how, how, how would, because I'm, I'm really curious, like, because we all, all do it in different ways, but how would you sort of map that out? You just all do that one-to-one, -one, equal spend, and then just see which one does the best? Yeah, depending on how much we care about that creative versus what, what else is running in the account, I guess. And then, you know, structure it so we can group on macro variables and get closer to statistical significance faster. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we, 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 we've had struggles with clients saying we want to, you know, that's always the way our clients say, we want to push this creative or we want to do this one. And we're saying, well, no, you should just like let them all run and, and see which one is, is the most popular. And it's always the one that they don't like that seems to do the best. That's what I've uh, found in, in the past. I always try to advise our clients to let go of what you think is cool or what you think is good because it's what your viewers and what your, uh, your average consumers would be attracted to, not you. And, you know, it's like someone coming to you with a logo design saying, hey, you know, I want it to be green and orange because I love Miami hur hurricanes. It's like, you know, those are very harsh colors and they're probably not going to be received very well. And, you know, we would advise a client, you know, against that. So it's like, it's very important to try to, you know, get clients to let their own preferences go a little bit and follow a brand guideline. Brand guidelines are different, but, you know, if it's like a, hey, you know, I just don't think this person has enough gatitude to work at Gadzooks, then I think we have to, you know, readdress and try to get them to uh, look at things a little bit differently, more objectively, that any any creative could be great. Uh, and, and you know, whether we perceive it one way, the, the masses might perceive it a completely different way. Yeah. Kevin, I, we had the same uh, challenge. We would launch like three to five uh, creative, new creatives in an ad group. And we had like a separate testing campaign but that problem just happened every time where like it would only favor one ad. A lot of times even the others won't even get impressions. Um, so a workaround was like single creative ad sets. Um, that was, we definitely have seen that work. Um, but yeah, a lot of it is just like, we ran so many like restarts just duplicating and resetting it either because of like ad uh, rejection um, or it was like um, kind of what you were saying, just like, yeah, nothing was picking up. So we would just like bid higher and try again, um, like constantly, like a few times a week. And the velocity of, of just like the number of ads we were testing, um, if we really were struggling in a certain week to get scale, like I think at one, month, uh, at one point in one month, we tested like over 50 uh, creatives, probably more. Um, so if you don't have the resources, another like trick, I guess, that we found was trimming videos. So like have it start at 
um, five seconds in or like 10 seconds in, because when we looked at like the percentage of uh, 100% video watched, it, it, the drop off was like so significant after like a few seconds. So people really only watch the first like, I think like it was like two to four seconds. Um, so if you can if you have like 30 second videos, try trimming them up, um, try adding like an intro or some animation effect for TikTok to recognize it as a new creative. But um, that that also was um, huge for us to just always be testing something. So what I'm hearing here that, yeah, it's almost a merge with, uh, for creatives with uh, influencers. You've got to use organic content. You can't kind of do it top down. Uh, we've heard that already today. You've got to try lots of creatives and volume. And then within that, you've even got to optimize individual creatives you know, in a very micro way. So I guess, Bradley, that sounds like the, the genesis of your platform, right? Yeah, Yeah. pretty much. Uh, you know, with you must be on to something. <laughs> <laughs> my email is no i'm just kidding uh, it's the thing is is you know for for us we are always learning you know and everybody who works in an advertisement agency should be always learning because what's popular today is not popular tomorrow and you know to be able to adapt and overcome and pivot is is important um and that's something we are very good at and we have been constantly working with our clients to even perfect the way that we work with our clients down to making sure that you know our first campaign is even more impactful than a typical starting campaign with another client um we go in depth in the creative pro production process to where uh, we can know definitively without a doubt why it creative performed well and double down on those elements at the end of the uh first test Got it. And Shamel is saying shorter creative ads for the win in the chat. I don't know if you guys agree with that or not. But... It, it all depends. So when concepting for a creative, uh, I always ask myself, what would make me stop scrolling? Um, and if you can create an engaging enough experience, uh, we've actually seen retention all the way through the end of the ads um, with some of our, our uh creatives that we perform. So um, it's all about the story. And TikTok is a great place for storytelling. And if you're a good storyteller, you'll do well. Great. OK, so final couple of questions. In terms of the tech stack, uh, Natalie, well, apart from the uh, Opera event, of course, uh, uh, Natalie has mentioned MMP. You know, what should you be using to, uh, to you know, and uh, is it just, uh, are you running everything just via TikTok uh, ads manager? What do you need in your TikTok ads stack? Um, I mean, if you have an MMP, I think that's just, that would be sort of your source of truth. Um, either uh, AppSly or Just, um, which have a singular branch, there's, you know, there's, those are the main ones, um, but I, if you don't have it, I mean, you, yeah, I just rely on the ads manager, um, but you definitely need some creative, uh, reliable, like creative resource, whether it's in-house or you're outsourcing it um, to another agency or a mix of both. Um, you just kind of have to have everybody on the same page that creative is really the most important. Um, yeah, whether it's like some creative reporting tool or you're, you know, uh, sort of going ad hoc and just digging into Excel uh, yourself um, if you don't have a tool. But yeah, I, I would say that would summarize uh, my response. Great. And uh, Sian is asking, uh, do, do videos, um, what about app installs, uh, for example, do they, uh, you know, do, do the influence ads really perform better than the regular video ads showing UIs from the app transitions? So we've actually seen an enormous success with influencers or actors inside of an advertisement for uh, mobile games um, specifically. Uh, the thing about having an influencer or an actor in the ad is it creates the experience. You can take, you know, the the gameplay and show someone's favorite gameplay, you know, show someone's like, uh, um, you know, about to get a bingo. And they obviously have one, but they don't get it in time because they don't see it, you know and add an influencer to that and you can take an already performing creative and make it and drive performance even higher um by 
working with influencers and in the creative, you can also explain, you know, a complicated game. Like this is how you get started, or, you know, this is, you know, one of the really cool mechanics that I think makes our game unique. Um, in terms of like match three specifically, there's uh, dozens and dozens of match threes and each one of them is unique in their own way. Um, so advertising the, the specific mechanics to help it stand out from the crowd is everything. So, you know, I, I think that having influencers in, in the advertisements and, and the way they present it is everything though, because having them in kind of like a, a studio setting where they look like, you know, successful Twitch streamers or, or something like that can sometimes almost have a negative, uh, uh, context behind it. Um, but to make it look more like it's an average everyday user and they've been you know given an opportunity which is another reason why we use the little guys uh we've seen a lot more success great um so anything more in the tech stack what you need or yeah well i mean if you're doing obviously doing app downloads you need to be using the right app download partner um tech stack by wise to run on on um on TikTok, I've been hearing a lot more recently that it's handy to have uh, potentially using Google DoubleClick so that you can track things effectively because, um, you know, like click, I don't know, I'm, I, I dropped out there for a minute, guys. I completely lost you. So apologies if you've already covered this, but you can't use UTM tracking in, in, in TikTok at the moment. So handy to have Google DoubleClick to do, to do tracking uh, and that sort of thing. But um, I think the great thing about it is, is uh, yeah, it's pretty much plug and play. You're ready to go. Great. Well, we've uh, we've pasted your links into the chat to find out uh, a bit more. Uh, I think we've covered a good amount of uh, ground today. Uh, everything from uh, the role of TikTok uh, as an ad platform through to the nitty gritty of targeting and uh, creative. So thanks for such a good discussion. A quick closing uh, question for you all. Uh, in term, in, on a scale of one to 10, uh, one being it's MySpace and 10 being it's kind of Facebook plus Google um, on steroids, how uh, optimistic are you for the future of TikTok ads platform? Well, I'm gonna give it a solid 10 out of 10. From Opera event. <laughs> Solid. If they, um, I, yeah, if they fix post click conversion, ten out of ten. Yeah, I d I'm definitely optimistic for the future of it, as sp especially as an, an ROI, um, like an important player in in your kind of performance stack and channel set. Um, you know, I don't think it's a fad anymore. It started in what early 2018. Like, I, I think we've got some kind of staying power here. And um, yeah, the, the ad products keep getting better and better. I think the impact of iOS 14 is going to be a bit unclear on just the whole ecosystem at large. So we'll wait to see with that one. But yeah, I, I give it like a 6.57. I'd say for the virality of it, like how quickly you can scale is just insane, like a 12 out of 10. But for, um, yeah, I guess like for the unknown of iOS 14 and uh, what's all going to happen over this next month or two um, and all the issues now with ROI tracking, um, maybe, yeah, around like a six or seven. Okay, so is, is your average six or seven or is it 12 plus six, seven divided by two? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what okay. is that going to Right. I'm gonna make I would just like to I would just like to say that TikTok has made leaps and bounds this year. Um and it gives me bright hope for the future. Okay, so we have a ten, a ten, a seven, and twelve plus six to make it easier, which is eighteen, divided by two is nine. So if well, what do you what do you give it, James? You've got to put your number in there my, as well. My view is not not probably worth uh worth worth as much as yours. So I'm gonna uh I'm going to avoid spoiling the average. Uh, so that's what a 26, no, 30, 30, 29 plus 7, 36 divided by 4 gives us a, uh, a solid, uh, my brain's no longer working, 9. Is that right? Average of a 9. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, eventually it should be better than Facebook. Good. So we're, we're brought down by, uh, by Kevin, but, yeah, it's pretty solid. So... 
very optimistic end to our event. Um, so yeah, uh, we're having some great feedback in the chat. People saying great job, enjoyed the panel. Thanks, Anuja. Uh, thanks everyone else. Thanks, Shayla. Well, thank you to our wonderful panelists. Thanks for chatting TikTok ads with us today. And yeah, uh, I hope we can recreate this in, in person, as I said, maybe next year. And uh, we're more out of lockdown. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of, sounds like a lot of great future ahead for TikTok. So uh, thanks to everyone here as well today for joining us, all the other speakers. And uh, yeah, thanks so much. Thank you. Cheers. Thank James. you so thanks, much. Guys. Thanks, everyone. Bye.